Hey there! I'm Roscoe the Raccoon, and this is the Campfire Series by North Dakota State Parks. Come explore with me! Hey everyone! Welcome to this week's Campfire Series on Monarch Butterflies. We have here today several different points in their life. So right here we have an egg, and if you notice, they're very small. They're kind of opalescent in color. They have stripes going vertically on them. After they get a few days being in an egg and they're getting close to hatching, they actually have a little black dot that starts to be visible. And then soon after they hatch out. We have one that's several days old. This one's already been pretty, pretty big. And that's actually a few days old already. When they just hatch out, it's almost impossible to see the stripes on them. They're so tiny. And as they grow a little bit bigger, we have this guy over here. Pretty soon he's gonna be able to form a J and then into a chrysalis. There's, oh, there's another little baby here. It's a little easier to see. So the monarch butterfly is a very iconic butterfly. Most people know what this butterfly looks like. They're very showy and brilliant in their colors and very familiar to most people. The unfortunate part is a lot of their habitat is actually at a loss, which is why they just made it to the endangered species list, um, both uh, in their travels, because there's actually four different generations that happen for our monarch butterflies here. If you know their migration in fall, that generation goes down to Mexico. They overwinter in Mexico. So once they overwinter, they actually fly up to Texas area, maybe as far as Nebraska North. They lay eggs there and then they start a new generation. So the Texas uh, butterflies come all the way up here. So that's what we see the beginning part of May. And as they arrive in May, they lay eggs. And then we have our summer generation. So our summer generation are, is the ones that actually stay here. And that's the ones you'll see probably up until early July. And then they're gonna be having their babies. So this generation that you see here is actually going to be migrating down to Mexico. And they are the fourth generation. So come on a little closer, because this one right here is forming a J. So what they do is they have a little silk that they attach with, and then their body shape goes into this J. And then as he's about, about to molt into his chrysalis, they actually shed out their outer skin, and then they turn into a chrysalis. So they're very identifiable by their color and the little gold flecks that are on their chrysalis, both along the top and then throughout their side. And this will be in there for a couple weeks almost, 10 to 14 days, and then it will emerge out as a butterfly. Monarch butterflies eat a variety of milkweed species. So as they're munching away on this uh, milkweed, there's a little bit of a kind of a toxic compound for most animals in it, which is also why we as humans don't like to have it in our, our farm fields and in our ditches and things because the animals we feed it to um, don't like it or they get an upset tummy for it. What's really nice for the caterpillars is that they actually accumulate this compound in their bodies. So as a predator comes along and tries to eat them, that little compound will actually make them sick. So even though it might not save the individual's life, it does for the, the species in general. So it actually deters the, the predator from eating them. And then they remember that for the next time to not eat those because it made it sick. So that helps the population grow. Next time you are on your adventure, keep an eye out for this iconic butterfly and see what else you can find. Wasn't that fun? I can't wait for our next adventure. Until then, you know where to find me.